So I'm already really, really bothered by this guy's James, like, interview, trying to defend himself from David Solomon. And he's telling his side, but then you got Gray Hughes, who's so annoying. I can't freaking stand the guy. Um, I have to mute him out the entire time because, like, I don't even want to listen to his his little chiming in, like his opinion means nothing to me. Um, I want to hear the nit and gritty. I want to get down to it. So I'm sure you guys do too. So let's get down to it. But James and the things that he said were like so red flag. Like he took Solomon when he, he thought he was 16 and he took him from his mom who had cancer. And it's like, wait a minute, you're 21 years old and you're taking custody of a, of a 19 year old. Does that even make sense? Like, and he thought he was 16, but like even 16 year old, like you're 21, what business do you have taking custody of a 21 year old? That's my first question. Like what? Why would the, and then he's like, well, the youth pastor, you know, warned me not to do it. So obviously this is a whole church thing where all the church people are together, like kind of conspiracy, conspiratoring about like what they're going to do with the mom who has cancer and the, the boy who as you know, James, this is an in his interview. He's very malnutrition. You know, they describe him as being very sickly. Even James, you know, we know in his Amazon article that he, he talks about carbon dioxide poisoning that he had when he was a child. So, you know, maybe he's got some sicknesses and illnesses. We know he's autistic. So it sounds to me like the church took advantage of a situation and used it to take this boy from his home, right? And that's just the impression that I'm getting. And so he takes him, and, he, and in the story, he takes him from his home, and they go, and it's three days they have this this boy that they believe, who is 19, <laughs> literally just a couple of years younger than them, but they believe that he's 16, so they're taking care of him, but they're, they're feeding him tortilla chips, and like, it's like blue tortilla chips, and that's like it, and they're not, they're not even questioning that, they're like, well, he was so malnutrition, and we were only allowed to feed him blue tortilla chips, and that's it, and they don't even question it, they're just like, that's all we're allowed to do, we're just gonna feed him blue tortilla chips, <laughs> like, do they even fucking know, like, who is controlling this whole situation, because it sounds really fucked up to me, does anybody else, like, listening to the story, like, what the heck is a 21-year-old doing, trying to take custody of somebody that he thinks is 16, but is actually 19. And then after three days, he's like, we were so scared because this 16 year old who's actually 19 made us so afraid of his father, who they don't even know if he's real or not at this point. Um, but he is, of course, everyone, has, you know, everyone's got a dad, but what happened to him is a question. Um, so we'll get into that later. But, um, you know, he's like, after three days, he uproots the boy to a whole different area. Oh yeah, we went and left and went to, went, we, 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 he said we three times, just like Jen Soto, total lie. We got, you know, we took him and we went to my sister's and we stayed there. Oh wait, I wasn't there. I stayed at home and I worked. Bro, you're, you're saying the same fucking lie that Jen Soto said. Like what the fuck? So David Solomon claims that when he took him and left, so now this is basically confirming, like James is basically confirming everything. Um, they did take the child. They did try and flee the state. They did take him and they were fleeing. They were, I mean, why would you be fleeing after three days? Uh, would you really be fleeing because you're scared of some other man or because you stole this kid and now you're on the run? So David Solomon says that they changed his name. His birth name was not actually David Solomon. That's that's like that's not a real name. So his birth name that he was given, I'm not going to tell you guys because that's private information and this guy's scared for his life. But he did give me his birth certificate. Now for his privacy because he does want to take back his birth name, I blacked out his birth name because I'm not going to make that public. But this is his birth certificate. Everything that he said is confirmed. His birthday, everything else. I'm not going to show you guys that either. But you can see here that this is his mom. Okay. And it's all right here. And I've looked at it. So I'm convinced. He also gave me his social security card that shows the date here of when his social security number was changed. Obviously, I got that marked out for his privacy and his health care was changed also around the same time. So you guys can take of this what you will, but now we've got a story where we've got James has now taken a boy that he, he by his own admission, believes is underage and flee the, flee the state with him all out of fear of the, the husband. Was a mom never afraid of the husband? She's, she's got cancer sitting in a, in a hospital bed, but she ain't fleeing. 
she never fleed with her son. So obviously she's not scared of the husband. So like this whole story just doesn't even make any sense. But you know whose story is starting to make a lot of sense? David Solomon's. So I'm starting to believe everything that he's saying. I haven't even gotten into like the first five minutes of this guy's fucking story. And I'm already like, oh my God. Him and his mother time and time again, physical abuse. So he was just deathly afraid of, his, of this, uh, this figure, this imaginary father that we had no idea if it was real or not. But that created a, an, uh, an environment of paranoia in my home. My children were afraid. My wife was afraid. Any knock on the door, like the pizza man, the mailman, was seen as as danger. And it got to the point where my wife encouraged me to quit my job and take the kids and up and leave and move to to, to flee the city to, to go up north. I thought that was obviously a little extreme, and I wasn't sure of the validity of his claims about about this uh, this father of his. But what ended up happening was we. We went to visit my, um, my, my, ex, my, my wife's sister who lived in Seattle, the Seattle, Washington area. Mm -hmm. So we drove up there and they stayed up there for the remainder of the, the duration. Um, and then uh, I, I wasn't, I didn't go with them. I was, I stayed home working. Um, but I received a phone call from Shiloh and she told me that she figured out it was all a lie. Uh, she, it just, she said like it was just too much, and they just don't click and make sense that none of it was true. Was, uh, she was just too trusting, and then um, confrontation with him, obviously like he was upset. He didn't like, he... Hey, uh, Anthony, whatever you... Okay, so that's where the story difference. So he says that he left and went to his sister's house, the sister-in-law's house, not to Canada. The sister-in-law's house was in Washington, Seattle. David says they went to Canada. Okay, so the story's a little bit conflicting there. But my question is this. You, this, this kid has convinced you in three days to uproot your entire family and move. And he can't even get that story straight. Wee, wee, wee. And then, oh, wait, I wasn't there. I mean, it's Jen Soda fucking lies all over again. I don't trust this guy. I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm getting red flags all over the place. Uh, for one, he's connected to this Brian Davis guy. We've already seen the red flags there. He pretty much confirmed everything that Brian Davis says. Like, we use these messaging groups. My wife met him through this messaging group. They're older. They're bringing in the younger guys. They're taking them and, and, and you know, like, they're afraid of the dad. So, obviously, the dad didn't give him permission to go. Um, <laughs> the mom is in the hospital, sick as can be. So... You know, she's, who knows if she gave him permission or not, but she says, you know, David says no. They all agree. Like James says, you know, mom had been stalking us and da, 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 da. So why was mom stalking you and mad at you for taking her son if she gave you permission to take him? That's, that's a red flag in my book. Like what, what made her do that? Um, why would she be so mad? And, and obviously David, who's actually an adult at this point in time, didn't want to be with them which he's an adult at this time that's his decision and if he didn't want to be with them and he says i didn't want to be with them then he in essence was being held against his will and that's his will that is his will what he wants and he done said his will was no i did not want to be with these people and they took me against my will somewhere i did not want to be and all because james thought he was under age this whole fucking thing <laughs> oh my god and Gray Hughes, I can't stand that guy. I just had to say that again because I can't stand that guy.